What if the way you've been telling your life story reveals the secret to what is holding you back? Stories play an integral part in how we see not only ourselves, but the whole world. Stories are more than just an important part of communication. They also reveal hidden aspects of our inner talk, which can either support us or end up holding us back from the very things we want most in life without us even realizing it. Join author, mindset coach, and award-winning singer-songwriter Carrie Rowan on her show, Look for the Good, every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. when she shares nuggets of wisdom from her internationally best-selling book, Tell a New Story, Five Simple Steps to Release Your Negative Stories and Bring Joy to Your Life. Carrie's powerful stories and compelling guests will empower you to change how you look at your own life while giving you some powerful tools and tips you can use every day to help you feel better and move yourself closer to the life you've been longing to live. Hello and welcome, everybody. I'm Carrie Rowan, host of Look for the Good on Syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio. Every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m., you can catch the show live. That's Eastern Time. You can also listen online on your mobile device, in your car, or ask Alexa to play Dream Vision 7 Radio. To learn more and for a full schedule, go to dreamvision7radio.com and evolve with us as we unite humankind with universal love. And as we do every week, everybody, we talk about little morsels from my book and we talk about how to look for the good. Why? Because our brains are just so beautifully designed to look for what's wrong. So we need to find ways to manage that mindset before it manages us. And before we get started, just a note from our sponsor today. Our sponsor is um, Michelle, who we're going to introduce in a second. So hold tight with that. Are you ready to experience an improved sense of well-being, reduce stress, and free yourself from feeling stuck? Synergy Wellness Center offers a unique range of traditional and holistic services, including yoga, meditation, acupuncture, massage therapy, energy work, mental health counseling, functional and lifestyle medicine, and health and wellness coaching and workshops. You will love working with our experienced and dedicated professionals and practitioners who are ready to walk alongside you on your path to wellness. Visit us in person at our Hudson or Bolton Mass locations, or explore more on our website at www.synergy-wellness-center.com. Join our yoga studio in person or virtually for only $49 for three weeks of unlimited classes and inquire about our corporate wellness programs at www.synergy-wellness-center.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome again. Today, we're going to talk about some really cool concepts. We are going to talk about that thing called, that icky feeling called when I'm stuck, right? Nobody likes to feel stuck, but how do we get there? Why do we get there? And how do we get out of that? And my special guest today, Michelle Grasso, I'm so excited to bring her on because she has some incredible stories to share about that concept and how you get yourself out of that. Um, and so- as you know, being stuck is kind of, I love to use the analogy of the record player. Anybody have a record player growing up? So we all had that record player with a real vinyl stuff that goes around and you had the needle that you had to gently put down onto that record. And what happens is just like that record would get stuck sometimes on a song, you had to just go over and give it a little tap and it would move along, right? And our minds are pretty much the same. We have those same grooves, just like a record player. And sometimes we just get stuck in a groove because our brains are so beautifully predisposed to look for what's wrong. And if we don't find a way to overcome that, we find ourselves stuck. And a lot of times we're just stuck right here between our two ears. We're stuck in a story. We're stuck in something that we keep telling ourselves. We can't do this, or we have a limiting a belief that's usually hidden inside of that story. So that's a really good analogy for you to think about. Um, and it's just a feeling, right? It's something that we can learn to get over. And I can't wait to talk to Michelle about that today. So welcome, Michelle. Well, thank you. Great to be here, Carrie. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And let me tell you a little bit about her. She's Synergy's owner, Michelle Grasso. She began working in the child welfare field in the mid nineties, and she supported families and young people who were involved with the department of children and families um, to access services and strengthen parenting skills, heal children's trauma and preserve and reunite families. Such incredible work that you did. Um, and as a senior manager at Wayside Youth and Family Support Network, a nonprofit child and family services agency, she worked there for 19 years and spent the last five years devoted to improving the agency's customer service and culture of wellness. 
In the fall of 2017, Michelle began envisioning the possibility of starting an entrepreneurial venture to offer mental health services to caregivers and those that they care for. And then she expanded her vision to support the emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being of all personnel, I'm sorry, all personal and professional caregivers and wellness seekers. Michelle's deepest desire is to create a warm and welcoming space where individuals who are caring for others or themselves can boost their well-being through an array of offerings, including counseling, yoga, meditation, massage, therapy, um, acupuncture, energy healing, lifestyle medicine, life coaching, essential oils, workshops, and helpful retail products. Through corporate offerings, Synergy strengthens wellness in the workplace for companies and organizations that focus on caring for others. Thank you for sharing Synergy's vision and to bring peace and community to all those seeking health and wellness in mind, body, and spirit. I love that. And welcome again, Michelle. We're so excited to have you here today and look for the good. And certainly that is what your career has been about. You have been looking for the good, right? That's why you're an ideal candidate to come and talk to us today. And all those things that you've done just led you right to this path of synergy. And it's such a powerful story. And and I love that. And I love that you and I came up with this topic of feeling stuck, because I think it's one of the most common things that people run into. And I'm sure you see it all the time at your center. And um, so tell us a little bit about synergy and what makes you guys so special and unique. I know the answer because I've been part of some of your um, incredible retreats and all the wonderful things that you do. And everybody that I've met from Synergy has just been such a kind and caring soul. So I know that you're attracting that into your business. So tell us a little bit about what makes you guys so special. Well, thanks, Carrie, for asking. Uh, it's interesting because I was speaking to a um, possible candidate for a position at Synergy this morning who asked me this very question. And um, I would I would say the same answer, which is our our staff is so um, incredibly authentic and compassionate and skilled um, at what they do. And they, we, they, we <laughs> come together <laughs> as a community of staff to work together and to really uh, want anyone that comes to see us for a class or an appointment or as a patient to feel relief from whatever it is that brought them to our physical space or to our virtual space and um so it's it's that sense of community that you feel if you're part of synergy from the inside and it's what we radiate out and so that when people come into the into our into our space um into relationship with us that they experience that same sense of connection um to feel welcomed and cared for so it's really what we strive for and it's the feedback that we get so I know we're hitting the mark most of the time. That's really important. I, I love that. Um, yeah, it's all about the feedback, right? It's all about it's all about the feeling that somebody gets when they come there. They want to feel, like you said, relaxed, taken care of, you know, like somebody's kind of got their arms around them. And I love that. I love that you provide that. And especially with the background and in, in the healing, you know, in the world that you came from, it's it takes a really special person to do that kind of work. Well, it's interesting because um you know, having worked in child welfare and alongside families who were struggling and the work, the, the staff who were providing, I mean, social workers to all kinds of practitioners out at, at, in, in the community working with, with kids and families, um, you know, it requires a sense of balance between being um, caring and offering of your, you know, your kindness and your, your expertise while also kind of maintaining a level of self-protection because all of us that are in this healing, uh, in the healing arts, I would say, um, you know, need a, a, some self-preservation um, to be able to continue doing that work. Otherwise, I think what happens is you do kind of get stuck <laughs> and that's where some unhealthy patterns can, can happen for people. But um, it's a beautiful thing um, and it is a challenge for those of us, it, 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 even at Synergy, to be sure that, you know, we have opportunities for our own work with each other to share and exchange appointments with each other and to offer support to each other, um, because we do take a lot of this in, right, as um, human beings, what, what other people bring to the table or to the conversation. Absolutely. So, it, it's such a fine line, isn't it? It's a, And it's taking that time for self-care. And because you work there, I love that you share, your practitioners are sharing services, you know? And so um, it's kind of like mothering the mother, right? It's it's taking care of that 
right? And and making sure that you have that you have certain boundaries in place. But um, you know, as a healer, I understand that as well. Um, and it's tricky. So tell us a little bit. I love the shift that you made um to get into, you know, being an entrepreneur, starting your own business. I mean, that that was your dream, right? What 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 encouraged you to follow that? Oh my gosh. I would say it started probably about four about three or four years prior to it actually happening as these things often do you don't necessarily recognize all of the signs and steps that are leading you on a certain path um but i had connected with um with someone who was opening a center here in my community and i wanted to help her and um i, th I think you know you know linda of course and worked with her a bit and said your dream is my dream and i felt very very stuck uh in what i was doing um in my other role and there was this side of myself that was like the spiritual kind of energy healing interested you know go here for yoga go there for massage go here for acupuncture kind of person and then i kind of showed up at work and barreled through my day um and so it was through a gradual um journey of wanting to infuse the spirit of wellness in my workplace at the time infuse the spirit of customer service and how people experienced us um and so i was able to do that to to a certain capacity and um and though still was feeling like i was sort of in this um realm of doing very important and valuable work but i want i knew i was feeling in my body like when you talk about capacity and physical capacity and paying attention to just like what's happening in my physical body and in my mind that i was really um like in a box I felt in a box, you know, in my mm -hmm. own, I'm not saying they put me in a box, but I, mm -hmm. I, that was my experience. And so then, um, you know, I ended up connecting with other folks who brought me on this journey to, um, who had experience opening businesses before and who I walked forward into this path to open Synergy, which started initially talking about opening services primarily for mental health. And I said, oh my gosh, okay, no, but we have all these other things too that will help someone feel better um, emotionally if we can add on some of these other fabulous um, opportunities for for growth that I personally had experienced. So everything we have at Synergies, uh, I've always felt um, important that it had been something that, that I or someone close to me has also benefited from. So there's that real uh, that we're trying to, um, you know, combine or you know, provide opportunities for healing in ways that we, we all know to be effective and true and proven mm -hmm. <laughs> um, scientifically, mm -hmm. you know. I love that. And, uh, so, so that's, that's a little bit about it, how it happened. And it, it's, it was gradual. And then uh, once the path started, as with many things do, um, if you're paying attention uh, there tends to be a flow that happens and a natural opening when things are sort of meant to go in that way. And that it's just kind of how it happened. And believe me, it was bumpy. And there were changes even in the first couple of months of oh, opening synergy and things things uh, shifted and um, and all for the good, all for the good. It's amazing the way that happens, right? And uh, And it's always bumpy a little bit in the beginning. But when you're open, like you said, when you're in that flow state, when you're really feeling connected, to the energies around you, um, then we be, can become directed, right? And it pulled you right out of that stuckness into something absolutely beautiful. Um, and that probably took a lot of courage to step out of, you know, a work that you had been in for so long. Um, oh yeah, I, I, um, you know, absolutely. And it, it, and it was um, a supported transition, you know, in the beginning, as far as doing this and, and being guided by someone who had done this before, because I wouldn't probably have had the courage perhaps to do it on my own. I had never done anything. I didn't know what it was. You know, how do you set up a business? How would you, you know, um, it was a lot and I'm learning every single day. Um, and it was the single best thing um, to, to ever happen to me. I feel like it's, it's been a gift in my life to be able to um, sometimes I say to people, well, people will come to Synergy. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a massage therapist or I'm, you know, I direct oper the operation or I, I'm in the, I work in the intake department. And sometimes people will say to me, well, what do you do? I'm like, oh, you know, I, um, I know. everything. <laughs> no, but, no, but what I've been reminded of, and I guess what, I guess when we talk about what you're like, you spread messages of, of goodness and of, you know, all of these fabulous, um, 
topics that you bring to people. And I guess I feel that what, what my hope is that I'm doing for people is creating a space and a container for for these amazing healers and, and individuals to come together to 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 serve others. Yeah. So I create that's what I do. And mm -hmm. that's just the most humbling, um humbling uh, gift of my life, really, to think that, you know, I can be a conduit in some way for all these people who come to us, hundreds, hundreds of people a week, hundreds. Wow. A week. That's amazing. And what makes you so unique too, is that, yeah, it's like you have so much under that one umbrella, right? It's like, that's unusual. That is not your typical, you're going to, like you said, have little one-off services. Mm -hmm. And I love that it's all encompassing. I mean, that's what makes it so powerful. You can get a workshop or a class, or you can talk to somebody about some dietitianary things. You do cooking classes. I mean, there is a whole lot. There's not a whole lot that you don't do. I'm going to say it's all under one umbrella, but it's that same feeling of, Hey, we're here to care for you. You know, it's the attitude that you bring to it. That's really powerful. Um, and I, and we all need, I, I think mentors along the way, especially when we take a huge pivot like that and we start something new. We need, you know, a mentor. We need somebody to follow somebody who's done it before us. Um, and I think that's a really beautiful thing. And a lot of times I think people get stuck and they end up just staying. Why? Because it's easier to just stay. Why? Because our minds just want us to just stay and be in our little comfort zone, right? That doesn't want us to step out into what I call the invisible bridge. But just like you described, I, I think of the invisible bridge as this beautiful glass bridge and um, once you take a little step out onto this invisible bridge, which is what you did, you said, I'm going to do this. You left your job, you stepped onto that bridge. And it's this interesting thing that happens because once you take that step, the universe starts filling a lot of stuff in for you, right? The right people start coming. I mean, it was like a miracle, Carrie. It was like that. It was like that. And it actually, um, I would, I would share with you that one of my dearest um, friends and healers um, was an inspiration for me because she um, had healed me and so many uh, other uh, friends. Um, and we uh, tragically lost her um, during this time of transition unexpectedly. And a number of us came together for her um, memorial and became then those folks became part of synergy too and it was sort of like her legacy and I dedicated synergy to her to Eliza and many people uh, and I sort of feel like she kind of watches over us um in what we do she was so powerful in her work and um as as a and as an energy and body worker and and so I feel like we are guided along the way and as an example of what you say when you when things open um and it's right like the things do flow. I remember I said to myself, I can't believe I'm going to have a yoga studio. Oh my God, this is such a dream. Like I love yoga and I, you know, and so I remember putting a, putting a, a piece out on Facebook saying, I'm looking for student, you know, yoga teachers. And I tell you, I sat at the wonderful cafe downstairs from us. And for two weeks, I just met yogi after yogi after <laughs> yogi of like amazing people who said, Oh, you got to meet this person. You got to meet that person. And in two weeks we had a yoga studio with the teachers and an amazing schedule. I mean, I couldn't believe what happened. That's amazing. And so it's the flow. It's the flow. And and those people are all pretty well all still here at five years wow. later almost. And it's that kind of like um just just paying attention to when things are, are working for you. Uh, I, I that was such an affirming experience that I was on the right path. And mm -hmm. so many so many magical things like that had happened in that. In that I'm going to shout out to Cafe 641 down there from us <laughs> because a lot of magic happened there. <laughs> Cafe 641. Uh, I love it. I love it. And I love yeah. like, you know, the guardian oh. angel, you had Eliza as your guardian angel, you know, like kind of watching over and that I, I just, that whole story is very beautiful. Um, it gives me chills because you just know, right. You know, when your path is opening for you you know, and everything's coming together, right? <laughs> yeah. It's that feeling yeah. of you just that can't was, get it wrong, right? Yeah, that one, it was so clear. It was so clear. It was just so clear, Carrie. That's beautiful. I love that. I just love that because I feel, you know, and, and that's what I teach people. You, you, you step out, you take that first step, which is always the hardest, right? And you have to just trust and believe. You got to believe enough in yourself and believe that 
everything will happen. And, you know, this is all the stuff that goes on up here, right? That we, I try to teach people and, you know, have a saying for yourself, whatever that is, you know, things are always working out for you or, you know, have a little mantra in there. Do you have a little mantra or something that you like to say to yourself? Mm, gosh, I guess I would say I have a few. I first wanted to say, I think it's also about kind of tapping into your intuition a little bit. And yes. Flowing with that. Um, I love that. A lot of when things are, are in flow. You're, you're also aligned with what your intuition is saying. Um, I mean, one of my, uh, <laughs> one of my mantras and for better, for worse is um, please all and you will please none. You know, you can't always hit it all the time. And I'm, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I sort of have to kind of let go of that sometimes. And it, it does drive me to be very achievement oriented. And, you know, um, my husband will say, oh, you, you never stop. I'm like, I know, <laughs> but you know, you have to, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm working on that. And we as an organization are working on that too, in terms of recognizing our capacity as individuals and as as managers and as departments and as a company and how we can um, be mindful of what's going on. Again, as I mentioned before, in our minds and our bodies that keep us stuck, uh, whether it's in a situation or in a relationship or in a job or in a house versus um, recognizing what is happening in your body and your mind and then um, looking at, at what that's telling you and what, what, you know, what steps you might need to take to, um, to advance from that. I love that. Because mm -hmm. it's often fear, you know, it's the mm -hmm. fear that keeps us doing the same things and from doing other things. But, um, you know, even as an entrepreneur, I mean, gosh, I have, I have a lot of fear about different things that may, what if this works? What if this doesn't work? And, you know, you try different things, but pleasing, please all, and you know, please none. I sort of try to do the best I can for, um, you know, for the greater good. I, would say. I like that. That's a really, yeah, that's a good one. Anybody can adopt that if they want to, if you're listening and you like that one. <laughs> so stay tuned, everybody. We're going to sign up for just for a minute um, to hear a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Look for the Good. I'm here with Michelle from Synergy Wellness, and we are talking about finding ourselves stuck and what keeps us stuck. And one of the things we were just talking about is fear, how fear plays a big role in keeping us stuck, especially when it comes to following our dreams. And that's why people have lifelong dreams. And sometimes it's just too scary to take a step towards it. But Michelle is going to share with us some steps that she took. She was just telling us about how she stepped out of her fear. And we're going to talk a little bit about, about that now. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Um, uh, well, thank you for inviting that topic of fear. And I will just say, um, you know, as a matter of sharing that I have uh, dealt with anxiety since my early 20s, um, personally, and on my journey, to, which brought me to opening Synergy when I was, you know, uh, 25 years later after dealing with, you know, facing anxiety in my 20s, you know, I had gone to yoga and massage and acupuncture and all the different services, counseling, all the services that we have at Synergy and would always say to myself, why can't these things be in one place? You know, why can't there be a place where you can like find all these amazing people to help you? Um, so that was, that was something I had thought about in my mid twenties and, um, but I never thought I would do it. <laughs> what I've done, but, um, so when we, you know, when I opened, um, you know, it was sort of a phased kind of thing. You know, I started with yoga and massage, and then we got into sort of the mental health piece. And I remember how hard it was to um, go through the process, not knowing what I was doing to get co all contracts with all the insurance companies for the mental health counseling. And my CPA came over to see me one day. And I said to him, I said, I can't do this. I can't do it. It's too hard. It's a pain in the neck. I'm just going to do self-pay. Like, I, I can't do this. And he said to me, Michelle, listen, people come to get, uh, to go to yoga class, they expect to pay for a yoga class. They're going to come to get a massage, they expect to pay for a massage. They come for counseling, they expect to use their insurance. So you have to do this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, you're kidding me. Because I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to do it. And I wasn't going to, you know, it was too hard and I was, I was going to fail at it. And, um, but he's, he, he was darn right. And I did it and it took me another, you know, couple of months and I got it done and I felt very accomplished. And I will tell you that that has been our biggest area of opportunity to serve people 
and especially with the pandemic, which of course brought out so much fear in all of us. And I salute my providers, like our practitioners, clinicians all the time for what they personally were going through and then supporting our community of clients through the pandemic um, who were all facing fear. So, um, and now, you know, the mental health services are the, are the biggest part of, 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 uh, of the way we reach people at Synergy. So I think when you think about your own journey and the resources, the breath work, the body work, the, I mean, I see our acupuncturists regularly to help calm my nervous system down. Um, it's something that it's like a lifelong thing that you can't see in me, but it's there. And the people that are close to me know that it's there. And for the most part, you know, <laughs> I keep it under wraps control, but it's something that I have to, personally, um, you know, really monitor and work on uh, as a lifelong issue. But I think it also what has done is it, it helps me to connect with people because most of the people that walk in our door are dealing with some kind of fear, whether it's anxiety or they have an illness or they're worried about their child or their parent or their stability in their relationships or their work or whatever it is. You know, I think it's such a, a pervasive feeling um and it helps me to connect to people and people will say to me i gosh i've had you know panic attacks for this long and i said i've had panic attacks i get that like it is so scary or you know i mean it's a it's a way to connect really authentically and i'm i used to be ashamed to talk about it um but i'm not anymore um and it's not because i've conquered it because i haven't <laughs> you know mm -hmm. it's something that's that's, the, that's there but I think as a business owner, we're also real people. We're parents, we're daughters, we're sisters, and we um, have health concerns in our bodies and minds that you know need tending to. That is beautiful. That is so beautiful. And you couldn't have picked a better business <laughs> yeah. to surround yourself. Yeah. Let's see what service today was going to help me. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of people, just like you said, struggle with this particular topic, um, you know, even here in my own family, you know, and um, so everybody has that in some way, shape or form. And so it's affected them. Um, and, you know, it's it's great to know that you as the owner, the business owner, you've been there as yourself personally. And when you can talk from that level of experience and what's worked for you and what hasn't. I think it just lets people know that they're not alone because a lot of times we don't want to share that, you know, we don't want to share those little, what I call the little shame stories, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, you think, oh, as a, a business owner, whatever you are in life, a parent or what have you, like you want to portray strength. And I remember, you know, working at my other job, not wanting my boss to know, gosh, I don't know if I can get this done on time or I'm feeling really stressed by this because I wanted to, I always wanted her to think like, I've got this. And I, I do, my staff will know, um, that it's hard. It is hard for me to ask for help sometimes, but I think we all have to kind of come to that place where it's okay to show your vulnerable side. And I salute every single person who reaches out to Synergy through our website or through the phone, because I know how much courage it takes to make that call or to fill out that online form, to say, I need support. It takes a lot of courage and we try to not let people wait because um, the timing is critical. And, uh, mm -hmm. and by the time they're reaching out, they needed that help like two months ago, <laughs> you know? Um, so true. So, That's yeah. a beautiful thing. I'm glad that you offer that. And, and the thing about those shame stories, right. Is like, as soon as we let them out and we share them, we don't have shame anymore because shame has to have secrecy and darkness. And when we let them out into the light, right. Just like Brené Brown, I love her work. Um, she talks a lot about that. And so I talk about that in my book, letting those shame stories out, you know, because when we can share them, we realize that everybody else has that kind of a story. Um, and I, and I love that. And it just puts even more heart into what you do because you have so much empathy and compassion for other people. Cause you've been there yourself and you, and you know, it's just a lifelong thing. It doesn't just magically go away someday. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. exactly. Um, I mean, I'm grateful for our, you know, uh, for the opportunity. I had a massage recently. I'll just share that um, turned into like a really kind of emotional experience. And I ended up talking to this person, this practitioner about a lot of things. And, and I thanked her for that. And, um, and she said, you know, it's okay to let your, to, to seek, you know, um, to seek us out too, you know, mm -hmm. So it was, it was, a, it was a freeing experience because, um, again, that vulnerable side is sometimes hard to, to share. Mm -hmm. 
Especially when you're the boss lady. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> this person heard a lot that day. <laughs> And I said, well, we stay here, you know, six days in the room and someone else was coming in after me. I was like, do you need to sage the room or something? Because like a lot just happened in here. <laughs> that's awesome. What stays on the table, what's set on the table stays on the table, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's what happens with body work. It is all of that wrapped up into one, right? Like I, yeah. you know, find myself telling things I didn't even know I was going to share with other people, you yeah. know, with my massage therapist. Um acupuncture, all of those, you know, the healing arts just brings us to that place. And that's, and, and that just shows, um, the level of the practitioners that you have, that you feel so comfortable to share with them and you know, they've got your back and that the trust thing is really important when you're putting yourself sometimes naked on a table, right? It's literally your yeah. most vulnerable moment, isn't it? Well, she reminded me of the importance of reciprocity, you know, and that, um, we all have something to give each other and, um, and, uh, and that's, a, and that's a beautiful gift. To that give, is to give and receive. You know? It is a beautiful gift. I just love the community that you've created there. Um, and that's so, it's so incredible when you can, like I said, you come with your real life issues, um, and you can feel safe to have a therapy session and then maybe come out and go, you know, do a yoga class. And I just love that. It's kind of sort of like one-stop shopping, if you will, mm -hmm. for yourself. It's the ultimate self-care, isn't it? It is. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like self-care is something that we, as women forget about, you know, we are so busy doing everything for everybody else as moms and as business owners or leaders or wherever you work in your company. Um, and we get so wrapped up in that, that sometimes we do forget. It's really a common thing that I find with my clients that we have to actually build it back into their schedule. You know, what are those things that make you feel good? Oh, I don't know. I didn't really think about that. What do you love? You know, you ask somebody that question seems so simple, but people have a hard time with what do they love? You know? Yes. So, somebody reminded me, um, one of our um, health consultants, um, Catherine, at our recent retreat who did a beautiful collage making activity about manifesting and you know she talked about creativity being one of the pillars of of uh health and one that sometimes many people ignore because sort of people think oh creativity is is you know oh it's sort of a waste of time or it's sort of self-indulgent and so on but gosh is it creative and wonderful and this particular event helped create community that day and connection and to the point mm. that people were crying at the end of the day because they felt so wow. connected to everyone else because of that activity that we shared. Um, wow. Creating and manifesting. That is beautiful. So, you know, there's, there's so many different ways to connect with people and, uh, and creativity and art is just certainly another way. And so, you know, we'd love to do more with that too. That's magical. And, you know, I'm a super creative person yeah. and a lot of people try to give me the tagline. I'm not creative, but we're all creative. We came from a creative place. We all have that spark in us. Yeah. And I think what I find the magic of getting people to go back to what they did as a kid, because it's usually something creative that they did intuitively. And that's where their passions lie, you know? And I think the hang up is I'm not very good at that, you know, or I can't do that. I'm not, you know, it's all those little stories in our head that we're yeah. telling ourselves, but when we can bring that creative moment back, that's where our joy, that is pure joy. When I sit down and write a song or just write lyrics or something, that is pure joy. It's like you yeah. said before, the flow moment, you have lost all sense of time. You're just engaged in the activity. It brings you right into PMA, which is present moment awareness, right? And there's nothing wrong in the present moment. There's nothing wrong there. You know, it's the whole thing. Like if we're feeling anxious about something, it's because we're our heads over in the future. If we're feeling sad about something, it's because we're thinking about the past, right? But in that moment when you're creating your art or whatever you're doing is the most purest moment when we're super connected to who we really are mm -hmm. without the fear, without the stress, right? Absolutely. I love that. It, it brings out our child uh, playful like nature, doesn't it? Yes. And I, and I think it's something that we all, you know, many people, you know, really, um, it's a place we strive to be in that present moment. I mean, I think about when I last heard, when I heard you playing and singing your guitar at the, um, in November, and I could just watch and listen to you all day long, <laughs> like the joy that would, that comes out of you and your beautiful voice and your music. I mean, so those are the moments, you know, that you can bring to other people. And I hope that, um, you know, we can bring to people in different ways too. And, and part of yoga is that it's just being in that moment with your breath, with your body and, you know, no skill involved. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
just have to be able to breathe. <laughs> yeah. Right. I love that. I could do that. I love that. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, and thank you so much for sharing that story with us. So listen, everybody, we're going to sign up for another second, but we'll be right back. So don't go anywhere. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Look for the Good. I just wanted to read real quick to you a message from our sponsor, Synergy Wellness. Are you ready to experience an improved sense of well-being, reduce stress, and free yourself from feeling stuck? Synergy Wellness Center offers a unique range of traditional and holistic services, including yoga, meditation, acupuncture, massage therapy, energy work, mental health counseling, functional and lifestyle medicine, and health and wellness coaching and workshops. You will love working with our experienced and dedicated practitioners who are ready to walk alongside you on your path to wellness. Visit us in person at our Hudson or Bolton Mass locations or explore on our website at www.synergy-wellness-center.com. Join our yoga studio in person or virtually for only $49 for three weeks of unlimited classes and inquire about our corporate wellness programs at www.synergy-wellness-center.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, Michelle. We are here talking about some incredible stuff. We were just talking about creativity and how that can bring us back to who we really are deep inside. And I wanted to share, you were sharing with us a little bit about anxiety. And I think I, I know that a lot of people struggle with this. And it's one of the things that keeps us stuck, which is kind of what our theme was today that we we're talking about the fear that comes with that. Can you share with us something that works for you, something personal that you tend to be your go-to um, for, you know, anxiety when you start to feel yourself being anxious. And as you said, reaching your capacity. I like that phrase. Yeah. Um, well, I think a lot of what um, drives anxiety is, as you we talked about before, being in the past, being in the future. And so really what is needed is um, to just ground oneself and to be, um, you know, kind of feel <laughs> solid with the earth about where you are in the moment. So um, I can, um, what I do, I'm a pretty verbal person. I will say to someone, oh my gosh, I'm like kind of stressing about this. And they will, sometimes someone else will remind me to breathe. If not, I try to remind myself to breathe and, and you know, take some deep breaths and move my body, uh, you know, to feel a full breath or several in a row. Um, but what I find for me, that's most important is to have a regular routine, um, because if I can keep a steady flow in my body, I will be less vulnerable to experience anxiety or stress from the day to day's you know, challenges. So um, even though we have a yoga studio at Synergy, I have to schedule a class in my calendar to go. Um, and um, and so, so it's, it's critical to schedule that into your routine, um, whatever it is for you, whether it's a walk or a class. Um, for me personally, I find that nature and the earth um, outside are fabulous. So today I'm going to go um, buy my flowers to plant because that to me brings together nature and grounding and creativity all in one and the color and the placement and the digging in the earth. I literally feel like when I come in from gardening, like my skin is, I look, I just lost 10 years. <laughs> um, so nature, whether it be gardening um, in this time of year or taking a hike, especially to a, perhaps a place I consider sacred, um, there are several different beautiful lakes and ponds and reservoirs in this area that I find um, particularly healing. And so go to your special place. Um, if you have a special place, if not, um, any place can have that special, you know, influence um, for you. Um, another piece I tend to look at is, um, for me, rest. I tend to be someone who's like a night owl and uh, really need discipline around that. So particularly if I'm ungrounded, it's much easier to, to feel anxious if I'm not rested. So getting that sleep is huge. And I know that our, um, our <laughs> holistic health team would also be happy to hear me say to think about what I am eating. I know when I'm stressed, then what I'm doing is that I'm starting to feed myself sugary things and things are going to get me to, you know, have more energy because I'm tired and depleted. And then I'm feeling more, you know, and you get into this cycle. So thinking about what are you eating and focusing on, you know, nutritious, balanced, um, you know, food. Um, Catherine, another, a different health consultant on our team talks about food as fuel. 
and this this phrase has gotten into my mind to use food as fuel um, for all aspects of our being uh, because they really, really, really nourish us. So I'm going to be gardening today. And I'm going to spend some time with my son this afternoon who got home from school because being with him is a joy and brings me into that moment. And sometimes when I think about like, you just need to get to bed and quit fooling around and trying to, you know, joke around with me or whatever it is. I'm like, oh no, start joking around with me. And, um, <laughs> and then I will tell you another thing that I personally do is I love um, angel cards. I love angels. I believe in a lot of protection and security for me personally, for my family and for synergy um, is, uh, is uh, supported through archangels. And uh, so I was introduced to them through um, a dear friend who used to work at synergy and does some workshops for us. So I find I will um, call upon my angels. I will perhaps have a question in my mind and I have a beautiful um, angel card deck. I will pull a card just to give me some, clarity and sense of um, perhaps a, a message that I need to hear today. Um, I always find that affirming. I love that. Those are some really great tips. Um, and I just, the angel card surprised me. I love that one. That's really, I don't have one of those decks. Oh yeah. Um, I'm going to a workshop we're having tonight on intuition and uh, mediumship. So that I'm always trying mm. to tap into what's going on here. because I, I do believe we have the answers here. Sometimes we just need to um, listen and that, Agreed. Is, that does free ourselves from this whole notion of being stuck and just, just listening because it's, it's much easier to avoid and be busy and not listen and feel stuck than to slow down and listen and breathe. I love that. that yep. The, the heart mind connection. That's a beautiful thing. And, you know, it just makes me think about when you were saying all these things really relate to our body, but they're really our mind too, because when the mind's okay, the body's okay, you know, and vice versa, we can use our bodies as a quick way to change our state of mind, which is what you're talking about and, and shift our focus. Um, and I'm totally with you on the gardening. I keep looking at my, I have a, um, like a square foot garden on my deck and I keep looking at it out my window because that's where I put all my herbs. I'm like, I'm going to get to you, you know? <laughs> yeah. It feels so good. And then you and you get to watch it and you watch them grow. It's like you're nurturing something and seeing it yeah. happen. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I love organizing. I love when it's fresh and they're all small and you organize <laughs> it and you've stirred up the dirt so it looks all pretty and dark and <laughs> And you got the greens. I love that. And I have this cutest little place that I go and get all my stuff. So you're, you're inspiring me. I am going to do that this weekend. And yeah, there's something so magical about digging in the dirt there. You can't get any more grounding, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I just absolutely love it. I mean, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> those are, I love that too. I, I, those are real. I usually do it before Mother's Day. So I'm a little behind yeah. this year, but yeah. um, thank you for reminding me because I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, and the awesome. rest I feel like is so under rated like i mean what is it 80% of our mental health has to do with what our sleep um yet if you if you were to do a survey especially you know women um in midlife don't sleep like we used to you know <laughs> but you know what carrie i actually had very little sleep last night but you know why because i valued being in the present moment i had a, um, a dear friend over and we had some wine and we chatted until like 1 in the morning um, wow. Like, I need to go to sleep, but <laughs> this is so great. And we had such a nice time. And I was like, I'll be fine tomorrow because I was just really enjoying that experience. And so, you know, sometimes there are these trade-offs. I gave up mm -hmm. some sleep, you know, for that experience. And um, but that nourished me, you know. And I yes. and I'm sure that 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 um that was a very conscious choice, even though I knew I would, you know, be probably tired by the end of today. <laughs> I can sleep tomorrow night. You but, can sleep. Yeah, we always friendship, say that. But friendship. And yes. Out. And I have, um, I tend to be like, it's funny, I'm sort of an introverted extrovert, I guess, um, as they call it. So um, I, I have a, like a close knit circle of people that are really in my very close orbit. And then I have a whole bunch of like other people that I don't see regularly all, all the time, but they're super close to me too. But I tend to really, you know, reach out in those moments to so reach out, encourage people to have have a one or two. I hope people that you can talk to about times where you're struggling and um, need some nuggets of wisdom. I I know I mm -hmm. sure need them a lot. 
Yeah, I think we all do. Yeah, I love that. Well, you were nourishing yourself. Every one of those things you mentioned was nourishing you in a different way. And when we can find things that nourish us like that, like friendship, you know, I mean, there's been studies that show if you have more than three or four other women in your circle, you then you're less likely to have as much stress, anxiety, and all these things that can impact us. And you also live longer, right? So it's proven and we just need to build in our schedule. And I love that you made a conscious choice. I'm going to stay up late because I'm really enjoying this and it is nurturing me on a, on a different level. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful thing. Knowing what you need. Right. Um, I had a client on the other day that was doing, um, this with me and she said, one of her favorite questions to ask is ask your body, what do you need right now? What is it that you need? You know, but it's also about, like you said, slowing down and listening. We can ask really good questions, but let's stop long enough to hear what the answer is, right? Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Well, you've given us so many amazing things here today. Um, so much to think about. You've given some amazing tips, and I know people are just going to love hearing from you about that. And the biggest thing being um, to follow your dreams and never give up on your dreams, right? Because you don't know how they're going to unfold. And it's taking that first step, right? If I, if you would have told me six years ago that this was going to happen for me, I would have said you were absolutely out of your mind. <laughs> and now, I mean, it's hard and there are days where, you know, and it's tough and I've never worked harder in my life, but the rewards, uh, and I just, again, feel very blessed. And I'm so grateful that you invited me to be part of this. And, and part of this journey has been, is meeting you. And we met at the very first Natural Living Expo that Synergy went to. And I'm so grateful for that and all that you bring to people through this incredible podcast and the work that you do. So thank you for um, bringing me into your your sphere. Oh, thank you. Yes, that means so much. Yes, we have known each other for a bit now. Um, and I just, I've always been attracted to your energy and and what you do and just, you're always putting good out there. You're always creating new things. You're not afraid to try new things and add new things. And I think- mm -hmm that makes your business really special. Um, and you're always open to whatever is that people need in the moment. And I think that's a really unique thing. And guys, if you get a chance and if you're in this area, go visit Synergy Wellness. And I'm telling you, it's magical in there. You will love it. And you'll get to meet Michelle. Well, thank you. <laughs> so thank you so much for being on the show. And don't forget, you can go to her website at www.synergy.com dash center.com. And thank you so much, everybody for tuning in today. And especially thank you for carving out some time for us today in your schedule, Michelle, appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're so welcome. And remember everybody, it's never too late to live your best story. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to Look for the Good with your host, Carrie Rowan, best-selling author and mindset coach. Join us every Monday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. right here at Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. If you weren't able to catch an episode, no worries. Just visit our website to find all the archived episodes of Look for the Good on demand so you don't miss a thing. And remember, it's never too late to live your best story. For additional resources or to find out about how you can work with Carrie directly, visit CarrieRowan.com for more details.